In this video, we're studying a projectile launch from the top of a cliff. So we have a rock thrown from the top of the cliff. The speed is 38 meters per second. We're given an angle of incline for that launch, 25 degrees. And the height of the cliff here is 65 meters. And then this rock is eventually going to land in the river down below. So we're going to start out by breaking this launch velocity into components. And I have a V naught X here. That's the adjacent side, so I get a 38 cosine 25 degrees. That gives me about 34.4 meters per second. So this rock is moving sideways at 34.4 meters every second. And at the same time, it had an initial upward velocity. We call that V naught Y. And that's 38 times the sine of 25 degrees, giving us about 16.1 meters per second. Okay, now that those components are resolved, let's just take a moment to be clear about where we're putting the origin in our problem. And because part B wants us to compute the maximum height of the rock above the river, in other words, we're measuring height with respect to the river, we're going to put our origin directly below the initial position of this rock and call the height of the river zero. Now let's take a look at part A. We want the time for the rock to reach its maximum height. And the key physical principle about maximum height is that it's the transition between the rock moving upward and the rock moving downward. Well, what's the transition between positive y velocity and negative y velocity? There's a special moment where the y velocity is exactly equal to zero. So we plug into our second kinematics equation, vy is v naught y plus ay times t. Well, the y acceleration is negative g because we're in free fall. So I get vy equals v naught y minus gt. I can plug in the y velocity at the moment of interest. That was zero. My initial y velocity was 16.1 meters per second. G will use the approximation 9.8 for that. And T is our only unknown. We solve for T, and this gives us about 1.64 seconds. In part B, we're asked for the maximum height of the rock above the river. Well, now we know what time it is when the rock reaches its maximum height. So we just plug into the y position function, y equals y naught, plus v naught y t minus one half g t squared. Again, subbing in a y acceleration of negative g. And we put our time t into that, and we'll get the height when t is 1.64 seconds. So my initial height relative to the river, that was 65 meters. The initial y velocity, 16.1 meters per second. The time of flight before I get to the maximum height, 1.64 seconds. We'll throw in the approximation 9.8 for g, and then I have a t squared, so 1.64 squared. And we run the numbers on this and obtain a maximum height of 78.2 meters. In part c, we're looking for the time it takes for the rock to hit the water. So this time, our final y position is going to be 0, and we're plugging into this same vertical position function, y equals y naught plus v naught yt minus 1 half gt squared. And our initial height is 65. Our initial y velocity is about 16.1. The time is unknown now. So we're looking at a quadratic equation in t. And this coefficient out in front of t squared, that's a negative 4.9. I'm going to go ahead and move all my terms to the left-hand side of the equation just so I have a positive quadratic term. Personally, I have no problem just plugging into a computer algebra system at this point. But I'll show the longer way of using the quadratic formula if you're required to show it. So t is equal to negative b, so that's the coefficient of the linear term, plus or minus square root b squared, so 16.1 squared, minus 4 times 4.9, that's a, times c, which was a negative 65, all divided by twice a, which is 9.8. I simplify the square root part, and this is the reason why I don't have a problem with students solving the quadratic formula using technology. You're going to have to use technology for the square root part anyway. And this square root part simplifies to 39.2. And I can see that if I pick the minus solution, that would make the numerator negative and I would get a negative time. We're throwing that solution out. I only keep the one that's positive. So I take 16.1 plus 39.2 and divide by 9.8. This gives me about 5.64 seconds. Finally, I'm asked to compute the angle of impact with the water. So at some point, the rock hits the water down here and it's still moving to the right and it's also moving down at the same time. Key to answering this question is to write down both of those velocity components, and then we'll be able to find an angle with respect to the horizontal. And the x component is the easy part because the x velocity never changes in projectile motion, provided we don't have any drag forces acting. So that is still 34.4 meters per second. Where we have to do some calculation is to find the final y velocity. 
Well, now we have the total flight time. So we write down our y velocity equation, vy is v naught y minus gt, and we plug in our initial value, 16.1, minus 9.8 times my total flight time here, 5.64 seconds. This gives me negative 39.2 meters per second for my final y velocity. Written as a magnitude in my picture, that's a 39.2 and I see that it points downward. Now the angle of impact, we normally state that with respect to the horizontal. So I'm labeling this angle right here, I'll call that theta. We're going to state theta as a positive number here, and it's indicated in the picture what it means. It's an angle below the horizontal. This requires an inverse tangent, so theta is the angle whose tangent is 39.2, that's the opposite side, over 34.4, the adjacent side. And we arrive at an impact angle of 48.7 degrees below the horizontal. And we're done. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.